Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe, and share to help support the channel. As we get closer to our blessing, I believe we will see more and more mass media covering digital payments and eventually see the digital dollar come into fruition very soon along with Fed wallets for your stimulus payments. There will be a push into cryptocurrencies like you have never seen before very soon, like it or not, it is where we are heading. I'm just the messenger, I did not make the plans, we are heading into a digital asset world, where everything will be digitized, all asset types from real estate to your grandmother's fanny pack. Everything will have a tokenized digital value and be sold or traded on the blockchain. I advise you start educating yourselves on digital wallets and the basics of digitalized monies as soon as possible, if you already do not know. Remember when you were a kid and you would look at your parents and think of how out of date they were because they did not know the latest fad? Well my friends, if you're not up to date on digital assets, you have become your parents. There are plenty of great YouTube channels that teach the basics, Crypto Dad is one of my favorite channels as he has a bunch of tutorials on there to teach you the basics. I will leave his link in the description box below for those of you that want to start gaining the knowledge. And remember, knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. First article of interest for today. Baghdad. Next June is the date for negotiations with America to withdraw its forces. The spokesman for the commander-in-chief of the Iraqi Armed Forces. Major General Abdul Karim Khalif, said that in June, his country and the United States will set timetables for the withdrawal of U.S. forces from the country. Khalif explained in a press statement published today that the decision to conduct negotiations comes based on the decisions of the Iraqi parliament for the exit of the American forces, and that is with the agreement of the Iraqi and American parties. Khalif pointed out that after the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Iraq, the security relationship between the two countries will continue in the context of training and exchange of experiences. On the United States reducing its forces in Iraq in the past weeks, he considered it a goodwill gesture. He stressed that the negotiations that will begin next June will not be confined to the military and security sides, but will discuss all forms of relationship between the two countries and the economic political and cultural fields established within the strategic framework agreement signed between the two countries, and indicated that his country wants a normal relationship, and a relationship of friendship with United States. And at the beginning of this month, the head of the Iraqi caretaker government, Adel Abdul Mahdi, announced that June 10th to 11th will be the date for negotiations between Iraq and the United States to start the strategic dialogue and Iraq was a government and parliament that demanded early this year the withdrawal of foreign forces, including the Americans, from the country. This came after the killing of the commander of the Iranian Quds force, Qasem Soleimani, and the deputy head of the popular mobilization organization, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, with a U.S. air raid near Baghdad airport on January 3rd. Over the past weeks, American forces have withdrawn from six military sites and bases in the north and west of the country, handing them over to Iraqi forces, while still maintaining their forces in three major bases north, central and west of the country. Next article of interest. Donald Trump's China nightmare is coming true for the U.S. dollar. U.S. President Donald Trump's power struggle with China was perhaps the defining feature of his presidency, until the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic struck. The pandemic and subsequent lockdowns crashed global markets and pushed investors around the world toward the safety of the almighty dollar. But the U.S. dollar's days as the world's reserve currency could be numbered with some of the biggest ever changes to government-backed central bank currencies looming and China leading the field. Casual discussions around central bank digital currencies, sometimes called CBDCs, have been going on for the last few years. Digital currencies would work just like regular coins and notes issued by central banks but exist entirely online. Instead of printing or minting currency, 
the central banks would issue digital dollars via online accounts, similar to the commercial banking apps that have exploded in popularity in recent years. Employers could, theoretically, pay directly into these government-run accounts and both online and physical stores could accept payment from them. Foreign exchange could also be handled through them, easing the flow of international trade. The long-running debate among central bankers over the need for digital currencies was blown wide open last year by news of Facebook's Libra project, something that almost saw the social media giant elevate itself to, or even above, central bank status as an issuer of the first global currency. World leaders and regulators slapped Facebook back down. We have only one real currency in the USA, and it is stronger than ever, both dependable and reliable. Trump said last year in a Twitter tirade against Facebook's Libra, as well as Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, scarce digital assets that were the inspiration for Libra. The dollar, is by far the most dominant currency anywhere in the world, and it will always stay that way. Libra is expected to launch later this year, though somewhat reduced from Facebook chief executive Mark Zuckerberg's original vision. Some U.S. lawmakers have proposed the creation of digital dollars and so-called FIT accounts as part of stimulus bills designed to offset the economic damage wrought by coronavirus-induced lockdowns. These have so far been excluded from final bills and may never get through a divided Congress, perhaps leaving Facebook's Libra as a de facto digital dollar. The big battle for global financial supremacy could be between the digital yuan and Facebook's Libra dollar a digital version of the U.S. dollar, said financial author and trading veteran Glenn Goodman, who made a name for himself by successfully navigating stock markets during the 2008 global financial crisis and has been closely following the development of central bank digital currencies. Both of these currencies may be launched as soon as this year and will make it quicker, cheaper and more efficient to buy, sell or transfer money from place to place. China will pull out all the stops to convince international trading partners to switch from the dollar to their new currency. If they manage to lure enough users, the US dollar could be in deep trouble. China is expected to begin internally testing a digital yuan with its four largest commercial banks this month and has lined up a raft of international corporate partners including coffee chain Starbucks, SBUX and fast food giant McDonald's. Battle lines are now being drawn but the war could be measured in decades and not years. Given the risks inherent to such a transformation, China will phase in the CBDC very gradually, journalists at the widely respected Economist newspaper wrote this week, pointing to analysis from Citic Securities that estimates it will take several years for the digital yuan to replace just about 10% of all physical cash in China. Donald Trump's first term as U.S. president may have been marked by his trade war with China, but if he wins a second he could go down in history as the president that saw the U.S. dollar fall from grace. Next article of interest. The need for a new reserve currency is more prevalent than ever before. The COVID-19 pandemic has revealed the necessity for a brand new reserve currency, and it is time for crypto. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has brought into focus the need for international cooperation and support. Coupled with a crumbling economy, it's shown us that now is the time for a modern, accessible reserve currency. However, markets don't exist in a vacuum of supply and demand. There are reasons why the United States dollar is the world's reserve currency. To understand the structural value of an economy in different markets, you first must understand how different types of production operate in times of crisis. Reserve Currencies The Crisis Safe Havens In a world crisis like COVID-19, countries would rather hold on to their US dollars, as their local currencies have become rapidly devalued. Today, they have turned to digital currencies. The US dollar is currently the world's reserve currency partly because of its ability to remain stable amid a global crash. However, this is an oversimplification and the wrong way to understand the true value and necessity of a reserve currency. Just as each great civilization has yielded to the next one, every reserve currency in post-Renaissance history has had a lifespan of about 100 years, 
leading many to believe the US dollar is in decline and will give way to a new reserve currency. If there is to be a new reserve currency, and not to say there can only be one, it will need to be better than the world's current reserve currency, the US dollar. What factors have made the US dollar optimized for stability? Geopolitics, geographical isolation and its natural resources have all contributed. A large internal market population and a stable trading environment have also helped. This has served the US well, but an innovative new reserve currency should seek to increase accessibility to bolster stability. Will the new reserve currency be a cryptocurrency? This is where the value of cryptocurrencies is really on display for emerging markets because a cryptocurrency can be both fully accessible and received freely through network participation. This is true financial inclusion where it is not simply an exchange of fiat currencies to crypto ones but a new type of production that includes the financially excluded. In the 12 years since Bitcoin's inception, cryptocurrency has become the pinnacle of international economic cooperation in the modern era. Its value transcends political affiliation and sovereignty and is instead derived from algorithmic and calculable value. With its potential to completely reconstruct the role of government in the financial arena and its mission to revolutionize and expand access to markets, cryptocurrency is poised as a very real and viable candidate for the next global reserve currency. Cryptocurrency is not without its skeptics, though traditional finance experts have some doubts about crypto as the world's next reserve currency or the necessity for it at all. In the past, Reserve currencies arose from powerful sovereign governments whose trade and economic value was stable. The price of Bitcoin, BTC, and other crypto reserve currencies notoriously fluctuate, indicating to some that it would not be able to handle the weight of global trade. There's also the concern that crypto may not have the flexibility to settle global contracts. Although crypto is already used internationally, in order to be the next reserve currency, it would need to build the infrastructure to support mass adoption and mainstream use. Of these three concerns, the infrastructural hurdle holds the most weight. But the worries over crypto's volatility and corporate interests are mostly unwarranted. What would be the benefit of creating a new reserve currency, and why? If making a new, accepted stable currency is hard, then making a new reserve currency would be exponentially harder. Even if we did have more reserve currencies, there's still a huge problem. In our centralized economy, no matter how good a reserve currency is, no matter how good any economy is, it will always be exclusive to those who have existing capital and are in the financial system. The gap between the rich and the poor increases the benefits of reserve currencies and only benefits the established anyway. If we make a new reserve currency, it has to also solve financial inequality as well. Why now? Essentially, direct distribution is an innate quality of cryptocurrencies. But in order for cryptocurrencies to be distributed for free and with value, the crypto token must truly harness the decentralized network value it is created with. In fact, a new reserve currency will come along at any time with any fiat-denominated currency that decides to get its act together and be a source of stability. This could be a powerhouse country like China or a country that's been stable for decades, like Japan. If countries like South Korea are able to create a new source of production other than export, or if Australia, Canada or New Zealand become high-tech centers, any one of these countries could present another relatively strong reserve currency. When we talk about the effects of these reserve currencies in crises, again, we look at COVID-19 and see which socio-economic class is really getting hit hardest by it. When we do, it's clear that even if countries get stability from reserve currencies, their most vulnerable classes still do not. If we're able to solve this kind of reserve currency issue and actually benefit those who are both established and not established, then we provide a truly new layer of resilience to the economy. As a result, we can bolster the economy as a whole for crypto fiat or otherwise. As we navigate through this tumultuous pandemic and the economic crisis it has incited, it is more important now than it has ever been in most people's lifetimes to cooperate on a global scale. 
in order to reach this level of cooperation, we must rethink institutions that we have previously taken as givens. As the US dollar continues to lose its value, its position as the world reserve currency becomes more and more precarious. It is time for a crypto reserve currency to take up the mantle and seize its role as the future of finance. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well. The links to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.